They're on groovefm.co.nz. Well, the other day I was talking to one of the band members from St. Cain. His name is Ahmed Ghalib, and he is uh, now currently based in New York. In fact, he just got off the L train, and you can hear in the interview, we had a section where we had to take a bit of a breather because uh, going past him as he just came up from the subway was um, the infamous cop cars that always are whizzing past at that time of the day. It was around about lunchtime. Anyway, he told me a little bit about his band. Um, he himself has actually lived in a number of places. He's lived in London, Sudan, and now he lives in New York. He travels the world playing as a musician, and they do uh, things like pop and soul grooves and all sorts of things like that. He's uh, He's been in a, a couple of bands like The Caribou Project, which is well known, and uh, a couple of other music projects uh, in America. Uh, also, I should mention, he's also played with Of Montreal, one of the indie bands that is around. Anyway, uh, he's coming to WAMAD 2017, and he's one of the many bands that's going to be there. I would suggest you check them out on the big stage. If you're wondering where WAMAD is, by the way, it is from the 17th to the 19th of March. Uh, what can I say about the music? Well, I would recommend you check out one of their videos on YouTube. It's called uh, Young Trouble. In the meantime, let's have a listen to the interview. What is it with certainty? What is it you believe? What is it that gives you peace? What is the Decided to come. I, I came to New Zealand a few years ago uh, for um, for a Laneway Festival, and I've been itching to come back. I'm really excited. We oh, have great coffee. Great, <laughs> you're a coffee fan. Excellent. Um, yeah. Well, you're gonna get you're gonna get lots of plenty of good coffee down here. That's for sure. Um, what kind of music? Okay. Did, what kind of music did you play then? That you uh, is that changed? Uh, I was I was playing in the band Yeater at the time, so it was a you know electronic indie rock band. Yep. Um, and we, we we did this that the Laneway tour. I'm sure you're familiar with Laneway Festival, and um, it was it was a really fun experience. It kind of felt like I was in summer camp. Yeah. So many amazing bands, and we're all traveling together. It was great. Yeah. So I just had to listen to your new album, and it's got a um. Oh, there's. I know I'm in New York. You've got a cop going past. Oh yeah, you can hear that. Ah <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um. I was just saying I listened to your new album and um, I can't help thinking that it sounds uh, quite a, like a, a fairly commercial project to some degree. Is that intentional? Uh, do you say commercial project? Yeah, it sounds more kind of um, mainstream, I guess. Hold on, let me get past this. Uh... Yeah. Okay, I think I've, I've lost it now. Oh, did you um, rob the bank? <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I would say it's intentionally commercial. I um, I feel like with every album, I kind of challenge myself to write better songs, and I go back and listen to the things that I feel like I did really well, and yep. and try to you know um, try to capitalize on that on them on the next you know release. And um, I think with this album, it was really important for me to talk about my experiences and and really focus in on. Uh, writing songs that, that told a, a, a personal story, you know, um, and maybe maybe that made it a bit more commercial. You know, there's, there are a lot of relatable topics in the songs, and yeah, um, uh, my voice is a lot louder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could that definitely sense, hear you know, that. But, um, um, I, don't, I don't know if it's intentional. I don't think yeah. it's intentional. <laughs> I could definitely hear that. I mean, um, I guess the big question to be, you're in New York at the moment, you're right in the middle of Trumpville, and you're called Ahmed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you must be yeah. feeling some pain at the moment. You know, I think that's the true American story right there. You know? Yeah. Um, it, 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 it exists. It's pretty, pretty apparent here in New York, and, you know, we just got to live through it and stay positive and 
do the best that we can and, and support one another and promote love, you know. Yeah. How's New York feeling? Um, they must be feeling a little bruised by this whole experience. Well, you know, New York has many different kinds of people. Yeah. So um, you end up living in your own little bubble, regardless yeah. of uh, the fact that you live here. So there, there are certainly people that live here that support Trump, and there are people who are against him, and there are people who are completely oblivious to the entire uh, state of United States politics here, you know, that... It's, it's just uh, an interesting experience. I think within my community that I am affiliated with, I think we're just trying to stay as positive as possible and support one another and um, trying not to be negative. You know, it's a, it's, it's a crippling feeling to to feel sad in these situations. You know, you have to let yourself be that way, but, you know, there's, there's something to do beyond that, um, and you have to help change the world and make it a better place. And, uh, we try to create a very safe environment and safe place with Tim Kane, and I think we're doing a really good job. You've got an interesting background. I see your uh, your your parents were professors, college professors, but then you lived in Sudan and you've lived in the USA. Uh, you've been all over the place. Um, what what's the Su- Sudanese connection for you? Um, family, my family all lives in Sudan, and I grew up living there and in the United States. So I definitely feel like being Sudanese is a part of my identity. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's completely my identity, but. It is, uh, it is who is a part of who I am. Um, it's really, it's really weird because um, I go there and I don't feel quite, I don't feel like I quite fit in. And I live in the United States and I still feel like I don't quite fit in either. Um, and it's helped me understand that I just need to uh, uh, create my own path and and trust in myself and be honest with the things that I, uh, the, 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 the things that I like and the, the person that I want to be. Um, but I really draw a lot of influence from the communal aspect of Sudanese culture and um, the the camaraderie that exists there, the hospitality, uh, the generosity. You know, it's all a part of Sudanese culture, and it's also you know very much a part of African culture. And um, I try to bring that into what I do musically as much as I can. Yeah. What um, what influences musically um, from the Sudanese side? Do you sort of holding on to it? Is it the rhythm? Is it the performance? Is it the music? Um, the way the music is played? I think everything about it. Um, yeah. Sudanese music is very earnest, and I try to be as earnest as possible with my music. Yeah. Um, honest, uh, romantic, kind of borderline idealistic. I guess you would say. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, I I draw a lot. Of influence from Sudanese melodies, they they have this very hopeful, joyous um, uh, energy to them, and there's a lot of polyrhythm in Sudanese playing, and I like to add a lot of polyrhythm into my music as well. Great. Um, I see you. Um, the word Afro pop comes up quite a lot in um, in your biography. I'm reading here. Is that is that a term that you would use? Ah, uh, sure. You know, I mean, I, my, the term I use is I feel like I'm like feel good music. You know, um, I feel like I'm it, it is African and it is a bit poppy and 
So I guess I'll take it, you know. <laughs> just to get people, people say about the music. And um, if that will bring more folks to the show that will help you connect with these people, then you could say whatever you want, really. Yeah, uh, tell me about some of the bands that you've um, you've you've worked with. I uh, see so you've worked on the Caribou Project, and you've been with Yay Sayer. How did you get involved in those? Oh man, the Caribou Project is almost like a like a almost famous story, you know. I uh, I I went to uh, Caribou is one of my favorite bands, and they've always been a huge influence in what I do musically. And I went to a show and passed. Dan Snape, one of my demos, and kind of spilled my guts to him and told him that I was really inspired by his music and I just wanted him to listen to my record. And um, and he did, and he, and he got back to me and told me he liked it. And he it just so happened that on the upcoming tour that they went on, um, they their drummer Brad had broken his wrist mid tour and they needed a replacement. And they reached out to a bunch of people. I was one of them asking. Me if uh, we could help and I I wrote him back and told him that I would do it and they called me on my way to a job interview and asked <laughs> me to fly down to North Carolina that night to start rehearsing with them because they had a show the next day oh, wow. and so I so I did <laughs> and in one day I learned all of the music and we started playing music so um, I am very much indebted to those guys for uh, giving me the opportunity and, and believing in me in my ability to do something like that and that experience has opened up every other musical experience I've ever had yeah uh, in, in, the, in those in those two months of touring I met up Montreal I met Yeche I met um, Born Ruffians who I also played with and I finished having enough money to move and I moved to Columbia, to, to New York City and uh and I still, I, that was eight years ago. I mean, almost nine years ago now in April. So, if you know, if I hadn't, if I hadn't been that annoying kid who gave him the my my album after the show, then I, you know, I wouldn't be here today. Um, that's that's the payoff for being persistent and annoying, I guess. I got to try that one sometime. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, speaking of annoying, let's ask an annoying question. When you come down to New Zealand here and you're playing on the WOMAD stuff, are you bringing yourself or are you bringing a band? What are we going to see? Oh yeah, I mean the Sin Kane live show is uh, isn't just me. You know, I'm I'm just one small element of of what you can expect. You know, we're we're a six-piece band that we travel together. Um, me, Jonathan Lamb on guitar, Ish Montgomery playing bass, Jason Tremel playing drums, El- Elena Katnlas playing keys and singing, and Amanda Carey singing as well. So we're we're a pretty big family bunch that we go everywhere together. And, um, and we're going to bring some local New Zealanders, some local Kiwis to play with us, uh, some horns. So oh, cool. it's going to be a pretty full-on experience. Where are you getting the horns from? Uh, we've asked... Uh, we reached out to a few friends who um, who uh, know some people that live in Auckland. So we're going to ask, we've asked them to, to play with us. Oh, cool. That'll be a nice mix as well. Yeah, it'll be great. 